uh, as a as a farmer by uh, by hobby at best, one of the uh, concepts that I was taught in the farming world is that disturbance causes growth, and um, and it, for those of you that work out, you understand that concept. For those of you that mow your grass, uh, know that that is also true. And uh, so disturbance causes growth, and uh, I love that because the disturbance that we've gone through in the last ten weeks as a as a country, as a nation, as a people as a world and as a business is going to, for the right people, cause them to grow. Uh, so I'm excited about that. What I wanna to talk to you guys about this morning is what I call Ribe Lab. Now we'll see if anyone knows how to spell that before I spell it for you, Ribe Lab. It's an acronym and it's Run Your Business Like a Business. R-Y-B-L-A-B, RyBlab. And so the question I want you to ask yourself and answer is, who owns it? Who owns it? Whose business is it? Because if it's yours, then I'm gonna share with you some ideas on how to run your business like a business. Listen, it's okay if the answer to that is it's not mine, it's Dan's business or it's John Wayne's business or it's, uh, it's uh, you know, Rob McGrew's business. Um, but then you also, uh, the, the rest of this is not applicable to you. Um, so you can go ahead and log yourself out and, uh, and move on because I wanna talk to those of you that are business owners. Um, and so if the answer to who owns it is I do, then let me just share with you uh, how I believe business owners run their business like a business. How do you ride blab? So one thing is you need to think like a business owner. So that, that'll, be, that'll be one header for you if you're taking notes. Another one is you need to talk like a business owner. Third one is you need to make decisions like a business owner. The fourth one is you need to treat other people like a business owner. Uh, the fifth one is you need to act like a business owner. And then lastly, you need to live like a business owner. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of take a look at each of those and just sort of break them down. So I'll circle us back. Think like a business owner. Uh, let me just give you some, some highlights or, or some, uh, some, some topics to help you think like a business owner. Uh, one thing for certain is that business owners in their thought process take responsibility for their actions and their results. Look, it doesn't matter where you are for the year, okay? I know exactly where Infinity Business Group is for the year. It's not where I wanna be, it's not in line with our goals, but I take full responsibility for where we are as an organization, as should you. Uh, our business is all about control the controllables, and there's been unforeseen uncontrollables this year. That's okay. Business owners take responsibility for their actions and their results. Also, in thinking like a business owner, be visionary in your thinking. Many of you come from the uh, Larry Salerno family tree, and I would argue in my almost 30 years now in, uh, in, professional, uh, in, the, in professional in this business, I've never met anyone that's more visionary in their thought process. Visionary is being able to be like a fighter pilot uh, and see five and six miles ahead so that you can adjust long before you're in the, in the thick of a threat. Uh, so be visionary in your thought process. Uh, business owners, when they think like a business owner, they know their why, they know their purpose. Uh, Justin Ellingson is famous for saying, motivation is crap. Motivation is not even, it, it, there's no such thing as motivation. When you know your purpose, you're naturally drawn to something you don't have to be motivated towards it anymore because it in and of itself, the purpose is what draws you towards it. And the last thing as far as thinking like a business owner is you chase results, not methods. Chase results, not methods. The common denominator of success tells us that one of the chief causes of failure is that people sacrifice results to go after an easy method uh, versus chasing after the result that they want. And think about all the things that you've ever done in your life that are difficult or that are worth it or that have required you to have a goal and you focus after it. It's not because you found the easiest or the path of least resistance way to do it. 
it's because you had an, a result that you were chasing after. Uh, that, that big number 23 behind Dan's head right now uh, has been celebrated in the last, what, five weeks more so than, uh, than it has in 20 years. And that entire series was about chasing after results and not methods, right? It, the, the needle points back multiple times over in the last dance about chasing an individual chasing after results and not methods. So that's how a business owner thinks. Here's one way that a business owner talks. Uh, they, business owners talk in terms of we or us or ours. They do not use terms like I or my or mine. So if you've caught yourself, if you're recently getting into uh, to, uh, team building and you find yourself talking about my team or my organization, let me invite you to change that. It's the organization that you are responsible to. It's the team that you have the privilege to work with. It's our organization, it's our agency. It's not yours, okay? Uh, another thing that business owners do in talking like a business owner is they choose words very intentionally. I read a book called one time called Hung by the Tongue. And it allowed me to be to, to, to recognize that there's both life and death in our words. And so choose your words very, very intentionally. And then the last thing, uh, as far as talking like a business owner, is to speak life into situations and into people. No one needs to be told what their problems are. Most of us are very well, very good at and very equipped at self-recognition on that. Uh, what we need is we, we need people to speak life into to us. We need people that are full of hope. We need people that are full of optimism. And I would submit that that's why you were naturally drawn to this business in the first place. You were probably sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of hearing all the other stuff in dialogue and the words from previous employers uh, or on previous teams that you were part of. Because it's rare that, that you work for somebody or an organization that speaks life into, uh, into you and to your growth. And so I encourage you to do that. That's how a business owner would talk. As far as making decisions like a business owner, one is that you need to define your guiding principles. You guys, this isn't a list of 40 uh, principles in life that you hope to live into. This is a short list of three to five things that guide the decisions that you make, not just for your business, but for your life. You also need to define your core values and identify the difference between what are your guiding principles and what are your core values. A guiding principle would, for example, be integrity. A core value would be, I choose to live life based upon significance over success. A guiding principle would be, uh, I choose grace over everything. A, a core value would be, we're gonna be an organization based on uh, blessing others or service-minded, okay? Uh, so you determine that. What do you want? What is your rally? What can you personally rally behind? Because if you can personally rally uh, and you can lead from the front, people will follow and that's how you develop a culture, that's how you develop a following. Uh, other ways to make decisions is use logic and metrics to make business decisions. Uh, I learned this a long, long time ago. As Dan said, I've been in direct sales since 1994. Uh, and it never, it, it, it never really settled well in me in my first couple years as to why I needed to track my daily metrics why I had to use a demo goal card and tell people what time I started working and stopped working and how many sales calls I made and how many demos I made and how many you know, intros I did and how many families I protected and sales I made and how much premium I collected and all that stuff. Never really dawned on me until one day I uh, was seeking some help from leadership and said, hey, it just feels like everybody I'm talking to is dot, dot, dot. And I got this really nice hand on my shoulder and said, hmm, it feels like, huh? 
well, let me ask, is that a good way to make all your decisions in life? And I was like, well, what do you mean? I was 20 years old at the time. And they said, well, let me look back and tell you what your statistics are telling me versus what you're telling me that your emotions are saying. Because what I was saying was, well, no one's buying from me because they don't have any money. And so therefore I'm not getting the result that I want. And yet my statistics were saying that I wasn't working hard enough, seeing enough and I wasn't seeing enough people. And so I wasn't putting the law of averages on my side and therefore I had a smaller sample size. I had to make the sales out of those less demos and putting pressure on people. And so they then were responding to me with the easiest objection that they could. And that was, I can't afford it. And that's what I was hearing. But the truth is it was my responsibility. So as a business owner, use logic and metrics to make your business decisions. Uh, if you can't get a return on your investment and prove it, don't make the investment, right? Uh, okay, and then the last thing is just harness your emotions. Uh, there's a time to let it rip. There's a time to uh, shed a tear. There's a time to get flat fired up. There's a time to get pissed off. But know when those times are. And good business owners know that. They know when they have to dig in and hunker down and confront the situation or go and recruit someone. And they also know when to just walk away from the situation and let it diffuse, right? So harness your emotions. Um, great, you wrote an eagle today, congratulations. Did you get a three out of three day? Because if you didn't, the day's not over. Great, you haven't sold a policy in 10 days? That's all right. The system owes you. Go put in an 11th day, just like you did the previous 10. Harness your emotions. All right, as far as treating others like a business owner, uh, first thing I would say is accept fault. And I wanna focus on the word fault. Oftentimes people would misrepresent this and they would say accept blame. And I'm not put, I don't, I don't wanna live in a world where I can be blamed for everything because that's a defeating word. However, I do want to be in a situation where as the leader, I can accept fault because in fault simply defines responsibility. And I'll take responsibility for where we are. So learn to accept fault, not blame. If, you, if you're accepting blame, you're letting other people press that upon you and you're losing control of the situation. Accept fault. In addition to that, learn to apologize. And I'm not just suggesting learn to say the words, I'm sorry. Learn the true art of apologizing. Hey, John, I need to apologize to you. I am sorry for this specific thing. And I hope that you can accept my apology and forgive me of that. Learn the art of apology. Because uh, when you actually do apologize, we are programmed as humans to provide forgiveness in that. The challenge most of us say is this, I'm sorry, followed by whatever you feel like you're sorry for, a comma, and then th the worst word that you could possibly say after that, but. And when you use that word, after a comma, you essentially refute everything that you just said before it. We have become a people and business owners that are really not good at apologizing and a good business owner learns to apologize. Uh, all right, I'm gonna get on a soapbox for a second. If it's your business, then stink and pay for things. Stop waiting for other people to pay for things for you. Uh, if, it's your, if it's a team that's working with you, buy them the meal, pay for the coffee, right? Pay for the office, run your own incentives, um, invest in your business because here's the deal. Wherever you're willing to put your money is also wherever uh, your, your true passion and your true, your true commitment lies. If you're unwilling to part with your hard-earned 
uh, commissions, revenues, dollars and cents, then you're just providing uh, you're just providing word fodder to the whole situation. You're really not backing it with any substance. Um, and you guys, I, I love the fact that I was taught early in this business, pay for things long before it's expected that you pay for things. I loved taking Peter Ferret out for dinner and a glass of wine and buying the, the bottle of wine that Peter Ferret would buy long before it was ever expected to do that. So you do that, pay for things. Uh, it drives me nuts when we have uh, people who are earning overrides on an organization or on a team. Uh, they're out field training and they're helping somebody field train to standard and uh, you can't buy them a $5 foot long. You can't buy them a $3 coffee. Um, it just, it blows my mind um, that that's the case. And then the last thing as far as treating others is uh, ha have, a, have a wash their feet servanthood. Uh, whatever it takes, right? Whatever it takes, um, be, be the type of leader that is willing to wash their feet. And uh, for, for those of you, we, we don't need to get into the, the uh, discussion of where everybody falls, uh, you know, spiritually in their life. Um, but you can, you can identify that. Go, go, and, go and look in your Bible and look at that model of, uh, you, you know, the, the night before the betrayal of Christ and him washing their feet uh, and get a, get a picture of what that looks like, right? Um, that, that, regardless of where you stand spiritually, you understand the idea of being a servant leader and what that can look like, right? Uh, that means others first always. Uh, that means uh, you, you may be above in title or above in role, but below in everything else. Uh, let, let, the, let the low become high and the high become low. All right, let me wrap up with just talking about how to um, act like a business owner and then ultimately live like a business owner. So in order to act like a business owner, I would suggest be the model for everything. Don't just be the demo model or the sales model or the recruiting model. Allow your life to be the model. So if you, uh, if you need to change the way you physically appear, great, be the model. Let people follow that. If you need to be uh, the one who mentally uh, makes some changes, then great, be the model. Um, I've had some very interesting and specific conversations with many people who are quickly rising in leadership, uh, specifically about uh, how their behavior is. And so um, let me get really granular for a second. Some of you just need to eat less, period. It's okay, let it be, let it be the case. I'm in that camp and I work consistently on how to lead, that, lead in that regard. Some of you need to drink less, right? Every family heritage function with an open bar is uh, a, a you know, ticket to blackout city for you. That is never going to lead you uh, to prominent business ownership or prominent leadership. Some of you just need to leave earlier, whatever the situation is. Don't stay so late because good things rarely happen when you stick around late. And some of you uh, need to arrive earlier and just stop being late to things. You want to attract people to you? Show up early. I will, I will say the first two people on this, on this meeting today are the host and the guest speaker. That's just the way it is. Respond quicker, okay, and react slower. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll park on this one for a second. Respond quicker, react slower. You're like, well, what does that mean? Well, a reaction is when you are uh, oftentimes negatively fused and you're like, oh, I gotta have a response to this. I gotta react to this. Nope, let those be. Give it 24 hours. Let the dust settle, right? However, respond quicker is, Man, I, I, should, I should call them and say thanks. 
I, I should approach that person and tell them that I really appreciate the way they handled their son or daughter in that situation. I should really thank that person. Well, get on it. Don't wait. Do those things quickly. I think if you understand the difference between response and react, you'll know. Um, just be the example. And then lastly, I'll say this in terms of acting like a business owner. Um, read, listen, and participate. Read, listen, and participate. Some of you are great readers, you're bad listeners. Some of you are great listeners, uh, or, or great readers, you're bad listeners. Either way, let, your, let yourself consume things and then participate. It's not one thing to just read and do nothing or listen and do nothing or not read and not listen and participate. Nobody wants your participation if you're not bringing your wisdom to the table. Okay, so read, listen, and participate. All right, and then the last thing, let me just wrap with this on how to live like a business owner. This is the part where it becomes fun. We all want the life of a business owner, but the only way you get the life is to live like a business owner. And I would say uh, one thing is just be, be authentic. Be you. Don't be fake. You don't have to put on a face. One of, I'm looking at at least four or five of my agency owner brothers. And the one thing that I know about all of them is they're all of themselves. You know, I'm specifically looking right now at John Wayne Sutherland and Dan, Dan Jinjigan, who are not the same in overwhelmingly many things. And yet they office together. They build a business together. They have a brotherhood together. But my golly, if I spent time with them and they were sitting on my right and my left, haha, I wonder which one would sit on which side, we would identify a whole myriad of things that are different about them. And yet they don't, that doesn't matter at all because they are true to themselves. They are authentic people. And that's why they have a business. That's why they own a business. And that's why people follow them. So be authentic. There's no room for fake in our business. Uh, you, the whole deal of fake it till you make it is arguably the worst leadership principle I've ever heard in my life. No, don't fake it ever. Just be you. And if people can't handle it, then either change you or try and find new people to follow you, right? No sense in faking it. All right, stand for something or you're going to fall for everything. Stand for something or you're going to fall for everything. Identify what you stand for and own it. Or you're just going to be, you know, you'll, you'll just go wherever, wherever the wind blows you. Um, last thing I'll, last couple things I'll say is this, uh, grace overall. Guys, we're, we're, in, we're in a people business. And here's the one thing I know about people. They suck. People are stupid. They lie. They cheat. Bottom line, people suck, and I'm one of them. So we all need to be met with grace because not one of us is better than the other. Sure, you might have uh, this little component that's a little bit better than this other component, right? But trust me, uh, none of us are any better than, than, than the others. I remember having a conversation with Dan Lahane. He had a, still has a teenage son, but his son was a teenager before mine. And uh, we were enjoying a Topa Chico uh, with, uh, with Mr. Jan Jigan. And Dan Lahane was telling us a little bit about what it might be like to have a teenage son. And I couldn't relate because my son wasn't quite there. And I thought to myself, wow, I'm so glad I'm not in that situation. My son will never be like that. I'm way better than Dan at that. And then I came to realize, wait a second, I don't have a teenage son. And my son also has faults that Dan doesn't have to deal with. And I quickly came to realize that we both suck as dads with teenage sons. That's okay. We'll be as good as we can and we'll move on, right? Uh, so just grace overall, gang. Just give people grace. We're especially in today's world. Man, it's so easy to be divisive with people. It's so easy to find their fault and just want to drive that in their face. And 
that will never serve you as a business owner and never serve you as a leader. You see, I can say that Dan and I suck as parents because we both have teenage sons and we were both teenagers, uh, sons at one point, and we know we've made a lot of mistakes and that's okay. Uh, but I also know that Dan's an amazing dad and does the best thing he can for his kids at all times. He, he leads and is the best dad he can possibly be, as am I. Um, but that does, still doesn't make us perfect because none of us are. And then the last thing is just live with joy. Live with joy. Uh, I'm going to encourage all of you to go back and, uh, and watch and find a video that Dabo Sweeney did. Uh, this was at the end of, I believe, the 2017-2018 National Championship college football game. Uh, pretty confident they had just beat Alabama. And they said to him, hey, Dabo, tell us, tell us what it feels like. And he just said, this is the joy that we've been talking about all year. And then he defines what joy is. And so I just want to encourage you, go find that Dabo Sweeney, D-A-B-O, S-W-I-N-N-Y, joy video. It'll be a great way for you to start your day and it'll help set the course for how to live your life like a business owner. So gang, Ryblab, you need to uh, think like a business owner. You need to uh, decide, make decisions like a business owner, treat other people like a business owner, act like a business owner, and ultimately that allows you to live like a business owner, which is where all of us want to be and the, and the life that we want to have.